Hey guys, in the last video we created our base controller, which is here, and we also created all of our site controllers, so home, shares, and users. There's not much in them, we just have an index function, and we're just echoing out some text. Uh, but what we want to do now is create our base model. So we're going to go into the classes folder, create a new file, and we're going to save it as model.php. Okay, so this is also going to be an abstract class because we're not going to directly instantiate it or use it. We're going to just uh, extend it to our site models. Okay, so this is going to be abstract class model. All right, and like I said before, a lot of the code in here is going to look familiar because we used it in the database class in the last section. All right, so let's create a protected... Uh, dbh property we also want statement all right and we need our construct so public function construct okay so this is where we're going to do our pdo string or instantiate pdo all right now we could put our host password and user directly in here but what i want to do is open up the config file and we're going to create some constants all right a constant is just like a variable except it's not going to change okay you only want to use something as a constant if you know for a fact that it's never going to change and that's a perfect place for database parameters all right so let's say define db params all right so to create a constant you want to use the define function and then inside here we want to specify the constant let's say db underscore host and constants are usually all capital and this will be local host okay so there's one okay we're also going to need the user so we'll say db user and at least in my case, it's going to be root. Yours may be something different. Same thing with the password. Okay, that's going to be my password. And actually, we have to set up the database too still. Um, and then DB name. This is going to be shareboard. All right. Now, while we're here, we might as well set up our URLs. Okay, so let's say define root path. Okay, so the root path is going to be slash shareboard slash. All right, and then we'll have something called the root URL because we need that in some cases. So that's going to be our whole URL. Uh, Local host. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's do localhost php.dev. And yeah, okay, so I'm not using shareboard. So actually, you know what? My root path is just going to be a slash. Yeah. When I was developing the, the site or the application, I was using shareboard. Uh, but yeah, I think that should be fine. So let's save that. Now what we need to do is we're going to create a database real quick using phpMyAdmin. So let's create a new database called Shareboard. Alright, and then let's create a table called users and let's see let's do five five fields okay so we want ID ID is going to be auto increment and it's going to be our primary key so we want to check that keep that as primary then we're going to have a name that'll be varchar and we'll just put 255 Okay, we need email. 
password and let's do register date okay register date is going to be a date time and then for the default we're going to use current timestamp okay we'll save that Okay, now we want to create one called shares. Okay, so shares, let's say five. Same thing, we're going to need an ID, auto increment, and primary key. All right, then we're going to have a user ID, which is going to be an int, that's fine. Then we'll have a title. body body will be text and we're gonna want a link and let's see let's add one more because we, we're gonna want a date okay we'll just call this create date date time and let's auto add that as the current timestamp all right, so that's it. Just users and shares is all we need for this. All right, so back to our application. We can just save and close the config for now. All right, and let's go to our model. And let's see, what we want to do here is we want to say this, and we want to use our database handler is going to be equal to new PDO. Okay, we're gonna pass in some stuff here. So let's say MySQL, uh, MySQL host is gonna equal, and then we're going to concatenate in our constant, so db underscore host. Okay, then we want a semicolon, and then we're gonna say db name equals, and then we wanna concatenate db name. All right, and then another parameter, we're going to need uh, DB user. And then we need DB pass. All right, just like that. Now, this is where our query function is going to go, our bind function, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but for, for right now, I'm going to save this. And what I'm going to do is go to our home controller. I'm sorry, not our controller yet. What we want to do is go into our models folder and we're going to create a new file here called home.php. All right, and we want to create a model file for shares and users as well. All right, so let's say new file and we're going to save it as share singular. Okay, and then this one is going to be user.php. All right, now inside of home, we're going to create a class called home model. All right, now since we're not getting anything out of the database for our home, we're just going to create uh, an index function here. And we're just going to return because there's nothing else we need to do here. Okay, so let's save that. And then what we'll do is go to our controller, our home controller. All right, and we're going to want to get rid of this. And we'll say view model is going to equal new home model, okay, which we just created. And then we want to say this return view. Okay, remember we created that in the base controller and we just want to pass in view model index and then we'll pass in true. All right. True is for the full view. So if we save that. Now this isn't going to work yet. Let's just see what happens if we go to. Okay, so class home model not found. Now the reason for that is that we haven't included that stuff inside of our 
main index file. All right, so let's first do our model, our base model, and then each individual model. So I'm just going to copy this, and let's change this to models. And this will be share, and then user. Okay, so what it's doing now is telling us that views, our main PHP file, which is our main layout view, isn't there, which is fine. It's not there. So these errors are legit. Okay, so we should be good for now as far as the home. All right, so now what we want to do is let's copy what we have here and let's put that in our shares. Okay, index, this time it's going to be share model. And then here we want to return view. And this is index, so we, we do want index here. That's fine. All right, so we'll save that. And then our user, let's see, our user's controller isn't going to have an index. I'm going to get rid of that. All right, and we'll add these later, which we'll add the register login and all that stuff. All right, so for now, I'm just going to save that. And let's just add the models. Okay, so this will be share model. User, this will be user model. Now this is where we're going to make our queries in the in the user and share models. All right, but for now, let's finish the rest of the base model because we don't have a query function for it to use yet. All right, so uh, what we'll do is go down here and say public function uh, query. Okay, and that's obviously going to take in a query. And then simple, very simple, we're just going to say this statement equals this dbh, prepare, and we're going to pass in that query. All right, and that's it. So our bind function is next, and I'm just going to paste that in. Okay, so this is the same exact bind function that we had in the last section. Okay, it's going to take in a couple parameters here. We're going to check the type and then check to see if it's going to be an integer. If it is, we're going to have this as the type. If it's a Boolean, we'll have this. If it's null, we'll have this. And the default will be a string, which will be this. Okay, and then we're just calling this statement bind value and we're passing in all the parameters. Okay, so that's the bind method. Next thing we're going to need is the execute method, which is also very simple. So public function execute, no parameters. We're just going to say this dbh. Um, no, not dbh. We want to use the statement. So this statement execute. All right, and then. Let's create a function to get the result set. So we'll say public function result set. Okay, then all we have to do is say this execute. And then we're going to return this statement fetch all. And we want it as an associative array, so we're going to say PDO fetch underscore associ. All right, and that's our result set. So let's save that. And that should be enough for us to actually make a query and get some data. So let's go to the shares folder here, uh, shares controller. All right. Um, Actually, we already did this. We're already including our model, so we can go to the share model. And let's see, under index, we want to say, actually, first of all, we want to extend the base model. All right, and I should do that with all of these. OK, 
okay because we want to be able to use that query class and all that stuff we just did okay so let's do this query and we'll say select all from shares and then let's set a rows is going to be equal to this result set okay and then all I want to do here is let's actually print our we want to print out the array rows okay so let's save that and if we go to slash shares now you can see we're getting an empty array which is what we want because there's no data in there yet so to test to see if it actually gets the data let's go to our shares table and go to insert and for user ID I'm just gonna put one and then let's say um, share one and then I'm just going to get some dummy data. All right, and then for the link, we'll just say edgewonics.com. Okay, let's do one more. link we'll say I don't know Google all right so let's do that and if we go back and reload now you can see that it's getting those shares all right so our base model we know is working and we can fetch shares now what we're gonna want to do we don't want to just print that out we're gonna want to pass it to the view so if we go back here let's just return these rows all right and then we should be able to access them in the view so that's what we'll do in the next video we'll go ahead and create our views